Hey everyone, today we're gonna take a look at the Marvel Legends 20 years anniversary Hulk action figure. All the figures in this 20 year series come in at a higher deluxe price point and the Hulk is no different. In fact, he comes in at a kind of super deluxe price point. That's about 30% more than I paid for Captain America and Iron Man. So let's go ahead and see if this action figure is worth that price tag. Taking a look at his card, there's a blue textured print backdrop with superhero logos on the side. The figure is contained in the plastic tray on that card with the retro Toy Biz Marvel Legends logo on the front as well as a sticker over here talking about the reversible backdrop. Now all this packaging and design is a homage to the Toy Biz Marvel Legends. Coming to the back of the card, there's a digital render of the Hulk action figure together with his backdrop, a description of the series, and some product information at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get this guy open. To unbox the figure, I simply slice the plastic bubble off the card back. And behind the plastic tray, we have the backdrop. It's two-sided with a comic cover on one side and a destroyed wall on the other side. And also behind the figure, we have a second plastic tray. And this plastic tray holds his two spare fists, the Marvel Legends base, as well as a brand new destroyed concrete base. Of course, the figure also comes with an interchangeable head, as well as a golden mandroid head accessory. First up, we're taking a look at the mandroid head accessory. This is exactly the same sculpt that came with the build a figure. The whole head is cast in a golden yellow plastic, with a little bit of that plastic swirl that you can see at the top. There's a single eyepiece, and that's painted in silver. Digitally applied black paint over here for the crack in that eyepiece. And there's also some brown paint down the side to show us a bit of wear. This golden mandroid headpiece could be a reference to that comic where Hulk was fighting Major Talbot in a golden mandroid suit. The Hulk comes with some open hands by default and you can fit that mandroid head in there so he kind of looks like he's grasping that head. Next, he also comes with two interchangeable fists. These are cast in a deep green plastic and looking closer at the sculpting and the paint on the outside, the vein details are clear, and he's also got gigantic knuckles. There's also a light green wash applied to the outsides on the back of his hand. These fists are articulated inwards, as well as outwards, and of course you can easily swap those fists onto his body for some display options. Now let's have a look at his newly sculpted base. It's mostly cast in a grey plastic, with the green effect parts inserted over here. The green is translucent so it lets the light in, and the effect looks pretty cool. There's sculpted cracks all over the grey base, making it look like some smashed concrete. A dark wash is also applied to the concrete parts of the base, to really bring out the texturing and detail, especially down the sides and the front of the base, where you can really see the rocky textures. And once again, coming back up to the top, there are also three pegs over here where you can fit the Hulk action figure to make him stand on it. The peg holes at the bottom of his feet go in just fine to those pegs on the display base. So now you can stand him up on this newly sculpted base, looking really cool and this is a great display option. And the second display base is a Marvel Legends logo. This is cast in a black plastic with two pegs over here and a rail where you can slide that backdrop. The printing on the backdrop is sharp and colorful. I do really like the, the retro comic cover on the other side, and this features a couple of villains like Modok, Abomination, Juggernaut, Rhino, and the leader. However, on this comic cover, he's actually a much lighter shade of green, and he actually has purple trunks over here instead of the ripped pants. So sliding that backdrop into the rail However, that backdrop is too small to be used with that new concrete base. The Hulk just blocks off most of it, and even placing the Hulk in a crouching position, he still blocks off most of that backdrop. So the execution of the backdrop is quite a fail in my book. It's really too small to be noticeable behind the Hulk. And finally, let's take a look at his interchangeable head. It's got a more angry neutral expression over here as compared to the screaming and raging out of control expression on his default head sculpt. Both these heads are cast in a deep green plastic, 
and given a dark green wash just to really bring out the lines in his face. And that really adds a lot of depth and texture to those head sculpts. It really brings out the definition of the lines in his face with his furrowed brows and the wrinkles on the sides of his cheeks. Both these head sculpts also have a separate black piece of plastic for the hair on top. I really like that the hair pieces are different as well. The raging head has a more swept aside hair sculpt, while the angry neutral head has a hair sculpt that's falling onto his forehead in a more relaxed way. Both hair sculpts are given a green wash just to really bring out the textures and the sculpting on them. So once again, really nicely applied wash and adds a really nice effect to the hair sculpt. Coming back to the details on his face, the paint applications for his eyes and his eyebrows are all digitally applied, and that means really sharp paint applications for his eyebrows, the whites of his eyes, as well as his irises. They even look like they have a bit of shine to them. He's got dark green for his lips, and really sharply applied white paint for his teeth. This angry neutral head sculpt perfectly captures a Hulk at rest. Still really angry, but keeping all that rage just simmering beneath the surface. Jumping back to his default screaming hit, he's also got the same digitally applied paint for his eyes as well as his eyebrows. But this time, his eyes do have red paint applied on the whites, so that makes his eyes look bloodshot. And I really love how that makes him look like he's about to explode with uncontrollable rage. Moving down to his mouth, he's also got green for his lips and whites for his teeth. However, on his lower set of teeth, you can see that the white paint has kind of bled into his gums. So that's a bit of a bummer for me. And of course, you can easily pop and swap the more neutral alternate head sculpt on. Moving on to the overall sculpt of the rest of his body, you can see that he's a complete reuse from the 80 years 2-pack Hulk, but because his entire sculpt is covered with some form of wash or shading, he looks much more premium compared to the 80 years Hulk. But once again, it's also slightly disappointing to see an overused sculpt that we've seen on so many versions of Hulk, namely the SDCC exclusive, the Red Hulk, Grey Hulk, Compound Hulk, as well as the Maestro. And those are just a couple that I can recall from the back of my head. So despite the premium looking wash and shading as well as the paint job, I really wish Hasbro could have added something a little new and extra onto this overused body sculpt. So looking at his upper torso, it is cast in a deep green plastic with a lighter shade of green for the shading to bring out the tones and textures in his muscle sculpting. It's impressive to see all that light green shading applied all over his body from his chest to his abs and even down the top and the sides of his arm. However, I do notice that the factory has missed out that light shading on the back of his left hand on my copy. There's still the same defined muscle sculpting all over. You can even see the veins on his biceps. Moving on to the back of the figure, it's impressive to see that same light shading also applied onto the back of his tricep as well as the top of his back. And that really brings out all that sharp sculpting on his muscles. But just coming back to the front of the figure once more, I would just like to point out the difference in the treatment of the wash of his head compared to his body. His head is cast in the deep green plastic with a dark green wash, but his body is cast in that same deep green plastic but with a light green shading. And as a result, the skin tone of his head looks really quite different compared to his torso. The green on his head maybe only matches the shade of green on the insides of his hands. So the different treatment for the wash and the shading really makes this figure look a little strange. And moving on to his pants, you can see that it is cast in a darker shade of purple with a light purple shading applied all over. And that really brings out the sculpting and detail, especially the folds and wrinkles in the fabric of his pants, making the pants look much more interesting compared to the previous 80 years Hulk. There's also white paint applied to the top of the pants as well as the ribs in the fabric lower down onto the pant leg. Once again, the white really makes the details of the ribs and tears in the fabric really stand out. And so I really like the effect of the white paint. There's also paint applications of green for where his skin shows below the ribs in his pants. 
the white paint is also brought on in some parts of the ribs on the back of his pants. But they got kind of lazy over here by missing out the white paint applications on the back of his calves. The light purple shading is also absent on the back of his pants. So it's a bit of a bummer that the light shading on the top of his back wasn't replicated on the back of the figure on his lower legs. And finally looking at the front of his feet. He's also got that light green shading and sharp sculpting to see that individual toes and toenail as well. Moving on to articulation, his head is on a dumbbell joint. That means you can spin his head all the way 360. He also gets a decent bit of sideways tilt. He's able to look up a little bit as well as down that much. He's got butterfly hinge at his shoulders so he can actually pull his arms way way back and that's quite a lot of good range in pulling his arms backwards. However the range of the butterfly joint is quite limited forward and he doesn't really pull his arms forward at all. There's a swivel hinge at the shoulders for 360 as well as coming out that far. Upper bicep swivel so you can turn it inside and out. Also a swivel just above his elbow so you can turn it outside and in as well. Single hinge at the elbows for just under 90 degrees bend. That's also hindered because of his bulky muscle sculpt. Swivel hinge at the wrist for 360 as well as bending in and out. He's got a mid torso ball joint so he gets some sideways tilt in that torso as well as decent forward and backward bend. There's a swivel at his waist so you can spin him 360. Ball joints at the hips that go out pretty far for a big guy like Hulk. No problems forward and backward as well. An upper thigh swivel for 360. Double jointed knees for beyond 90 degrees of range and that's good for a big guy like Hulk. No calf swivel despite the possibility of hiding a joint like that. And finally ankle tilt upwards and downwards and ankle pivot outwards as well as inwards. So if you already have one of the many Hulk figures released previously, you should be more than familiar with the scheme of articulation on this figure. He is fun to pose and sturdy to handle. So you should be able to get him into many different fun poses. And here is a quick head swap with the 80 years Hulk. You can clearly see that the skin tones are vastly different across the two bodies. But the new Hulk can also use that same ripped shirt accessory from the 80 years Hulk on his shoulders. In fact, I really like how the ripped shirt accessory looks on this new Hulk. Which kind of makes me wish that at this price point, Hasbro should have given him a new ripped shirt accessory. And that would have definitely made this figure much better. And here's a quick side by side with the Toy Biz Face Off Hulk action figure. And we can clearly see how the action figure technology has advanced over the years in terms of manufacturing and production. Size wise, the Hulk stands at 8.5 inches and that's about 21.5 centimeters. For size comparisons, here he is with the 20 years Captain America and Iron Man. And at this point in time, I can say that the Hulk feels like the middle ground of this series. With Cap being the outstanding entry and Iron Man being the slightly disappointing one. With Thor and Black Widow, Vision and Doctor Strange, She-Hulk and the Joe Fix-It Build-A-Figure, Wolverine and Spider-Man, with Leader and the Gameverse Abomination Build-A-Figure with a custom head sculpt, and with Ultron and Doctor Doom. Some G.I. Joe Classified series, and Star Wars Black series. The great things about this Hulk are the fantastic head sculpts and the premium looking paint job. However, at this price point, we should be expecting much more than that. The accessories and backdrop are a let down and I just don't feel there's enough to recommend in this set. If you don't have a Hulk, this Hulk figure is good enough to be a definitive standalone for your collection. But if you already have a recent Hulk figure at this price point, this doesn't feel like a worthy purchase. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to my channel for more toy reviews. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.